One of the biggest misconception in the field of photography has to do with the concept that bigger is better. Though this was true in the past, things have been changing in technology world and you can't judge the quality just by looking at the size. Yes, we are talking about cameras and sensor size. Recently, I came across a conversation and the statement that was made was, if you want better photos, buy a full frame camera and if you want better video, take a micro four third camera. Probably the person got carried away by Canon 1DX Mark II images or a Panasonic GH5 videos, but forgot that there are sensor size bigger than full frame which can be used to take outstanding photos and sensor size smaller than micro four third which can produce very good videos too. But that's not the point of this video. One should not get carried away by the sensor size to define the application of a camera without knowing the advantages or limitations of both physics and optics. First, let's understand what's a sensor. An image sensor is an electronic device that detects and conveys the information that constitutes an image. It does so by converting the light waves into signals. Currently, the use types are semiconductor charge coupled devices or CCD or complementary metal oxide semiconductor which is CMOS. There are advantages and disadvantages of both, but that's out of scope of this video as we'll mainly concentrate on the sensor size. The term sensor size refers to the dimension of an image sensor and is usually defined in millimeters. The standard reference for a digital camera is a full frame sensor which measures 36 mm by 24 mm, which is directly in relation to the 35 mm film format. But what we also find most commonly in the market now is the APS-C sensor and the micro four third sensor. These are sensor sizes which are smaller than the full frame sensor and have a set of its own disadvantages and advantages. Let's have a look at an image overlay of various sensor size. You can notice very evidently that at 22 mm by 14 mm, the APS-C or a crop sensor is a lot smaller than a full frame sensor. Same is the case with micro four third sensor. Now owing to this reduction in size, the effective field of view of a lens used on an APS-C or a micro four third cameras will be different from the same lens when used on a full frame sensor camera. The most common crop factor for APS-C sensor or what is called as a super 35 sensor in cinematography world is around 1.5 to 1.6 depending on the brand of the camera that you choose. Canon APS-C cameras have a much narrower 1.6x crop factor whereas the cameras from Nikon, Sony or Fuji have a 1.5x crop factor. What this means in the real world scenario is that if you use a lens which is designed for a full frame camera and is tagged as 100 mm it will have an effective field of view of 160 mm when used on a Canon APS-C camera or 150 mm if used on a Nikon or a Sony APS-C camera. This holds good for micro four third also. Micro four third is an image sensor size format introduced by Panasonic and Olympus. This sensor size is about 30 to 40 percent smaller than the APS-C sensor and have a standard crop factor of 2x which means when you use a 100 mm lens meant for a full frame camera, it will have an effective field of view of 200 mm on a micro four third sensor. Whether it's APS-C or micro four third, the smaller sensor cameras were introduced for a specific reason. Smaller and lighter camera bodies and lenses. Effective use of image circle due to the way in which the light hits the sensor. Adaptability to various lens formats across the brands. But every good thing comes with its own associated drawbacks and the ones related to the APS-C and micro four third sensor are some of them listed below. Smaller sensor means smaller space to pack more pixel and hence resulting in smaller puff pixel size which will impact the quality and the quantity of light read by the sensor. Let me deviate a bit here to highlight a point that a bigger sensor with a lighter pixel density will always result in better light gathering ability of a sensor and in turn also lead to a better image quality. The Sony A7S series of camera is a very good example of it. But you might want to also read a very good article written by a French photographer Sylvian around this aspect which I'll link in the description below. Smaller sensor and higher pixel density also means the SNR or the signal to noise ratio is higher and thereby evident that the smaller sensor cameras packed with higher megapixel will result in noisier images. To get the same angle of view as with the large sensor, the focal length of the lens used with the APS-C or a micro four third sensor needs to be shorter, resulting in a challenge for getting a good set of wide angle lenses. Depth of field also get impacted when the sensor size goes down, 
For instance, a 35 mm full frame DSLR can match the depth of a micro four third camera by closing down the aperture by two stops. But it may be more difficult or probably even impossible for a micro four third system to match the shallow depth of field of a full frame camera using a fast lens. While it is possible and feasible to use a full frame camera on an APS-C or a micro four third camera, the other way around is not a practical solution as the image circle created by these lenses are way smaller than the effective sensor size. Few camera manufacturers like the Nikon and Sony does give a APS-C mode in their full frame camera to be able to get a narrower field of view or adaptability to their own APS-C format of lenses at the expense of a reduced resolution. So let's get back to the initial question of which camera or a sensor size is good for photo or video. The answer is both is good for both type of application. It's the science and the financial limitation which will drive the user to make a decision. While camera makers are able to get exceptional video quality on micro four third or APS-C sensor, companies like Sony are thriving and moving forward in revolutionizing the video industry by working on full frame sensor high end production cinema cameras. While on the other end, though the cameras like the Canon 5D series, Nikon D800 series and Sony A7 series are reference for image quality, the images coming out of their APS-C counterpart or micro four third cameras from Olympus or Panasonic are not too far behind. So next time you're out there looking to buy a camera for photo or video purpose, just ask yourself, what's your need and what's your budget? And are you willing to live with the limitation that the sensor size might impose? Hope that was helpful in giving an insight about the camera sensor size, their advantages and disadvantages. This is me Shiv signing off and I'll catch you guys again in the next one. Keep smiling.